Hey guys, welcome back to SimTech channel. So imagine this, you are a power system engineer or technician and you have been presented with this network here and the power factor at the grid point of connection here is 0 0.83 and you are required to improve this power factor from 0 0.83 to 0 0.95 and how are you going to do it in power factory so this is what we're going to do in this tutorial so we're basically going to learn how to add a shunt capacitor at the load bus here so that we can improve the grid power factor from 0.83 to 0.95 before we can add this shunt capacitor here we first need to calculate the required reactive power that we need to compensate for the shunt capacitor so you can't just get one and connect it onto your network it must be properly sized so to do that we're going to use the power triangle and the pythagoras theorem to basically calculate that uh, reactive power and implement in power factory and if you find this tutorial useful please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel if you want to see more tutorial like this in the future Thank you so much for the support now first thing first we need to understand the problem statement before moving forward now we know that the external grid is supporting our network with 9.9 .9 mvar okay and that is resulting with a 0 0.83 power factor and here on our network we also have a synchronous machine that is contributing 2.1 and as we can see our two loads combined they are absorbing about 11 mvar okay now we can do an adjustment here for the synchronous machine to actually support the load bus bar here because that is actually what it is meant to do but right now the machine is only able to add 2.1 it cannot do more than that okay so now which means we are only left to adding the shunt capacitors onto our system okay so but before we can do that, like I've said earlier, we have to calculate it. So, here in the power triangle, we can see that the apparent power, S, is the hypotenuse, and the opposite side is our reactive power. Now, the angle here, theta, is the angle between the real power and the apparent power. Now, for the system to become more efficient, this angle must be almost nothing, because an angle of zero right that will basically mean the hypotenuse here is going to be lying right flat on the adjacent here basically s becoming equal to p mathematically that means angle of zero cos of zero here is going to be one okay so that basically p is equal to vi which is s but over here sine of zero basically means zero and that verify by the fact that if the hypotenuse is touching the adjacent the opposite side is going to disappear right so the objective is to always reduce the phase angle between the real power and the apparent power by doing so we're going to be improving the power factor to save us some time i went ahead and did some calculations so let's quickly go through it now we know that q1 is the actual reactive power that the grid is supplying into the system and that is at this power factor so we need to find the compensation here okay and that is calculated by doing q1 minus q2 but what is q2 that's what we are looking for and using the power triangle s square is equal to p square plus q square and that means q is the square root of s square minus p square okay now what is s and what is p now using the current reactive power we can calculate p by using the angle from this power factor okay and that would give us this 14.73 megawatt now what is s now it is important to note that we need to find a new s because the current s here which give us about 18 megavolt ampere and that is also giving us this p of 15 megawatt which is shown here we calculate about 14.73 calculation discrepancies and that is at this reactive power 
But if we need to bring the power factor to 0.95, that means we need to find a new S. And that will ultimately give us a new Q. So this is what we are doing here. Then we say, well, the new S, S2, is then P divided by the new power factor, okay? PF of 0, 0,95. It is this new power factor that we need to find a new P, and that should be 15.51 megavolt ampere reactive, okay? So as you can see from this, it basically means that with an improved power factor, the apparent power drops, okay? Which means the system is becoming more efficient. What it also means is that your apparent power here is getting much closer to the active power. And as we've seen that, once the two mergers become equal, that means your system is 100% efficient. There are no losses or reactive power in the system. Great stuff. Now, moving forward, we know that Q2 should then be calculated by using that S minus the P we got earlier. And that gives us this P here, which is about 4.84 MVAR. Okay? Then the compensation is then subtracting Q1 minus the Q2 that we found. And we found about 5.1 MVAR. What does this mean? All of this just means that the new capacitor that we're going to add here, the shunt capacitor, right? One of these guys here that we're going to add into the system, it must be about 5 megavolt ampere reactive. It must supply about 5.1 MVAR into the system so that the grid power factor can improve from 0 0.83 to 0. 9.5. So let's go ahead and add that shunt capacitance or that shunt capacitor into our network. Great. Now it's time to find our shunt capacitor and add it onto our point of connection here, PCC. Okay. Point of common coupling, if you want, for our network. So we know that we need five megavolt ampere reactive to be injected into the system so let's see uh, the shunt filter there we go this is the shunt filter we're just going to go ahead and click on the point of common coupling and click over here there we go now by the way guys if you find this tutorial useful please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel Thank you so much for the support. Very much appreciated. Now, the rating of our shunt capacitance, we say that it's about 5 megavolt ampere reactive. Okay? And the nominal voltage that it must be inserted, that is very important. It must operate on 20 kV. Why 20 kV? Because this bus bar here is rated at 20 kV line to line. Okay? So, you're not going to connect a shunt capacitance at a voltage that is rated higher than the actual shunt capacitance. It's not going to work, okay? So, it is very important you respect the nominal voltage and also the rating of the shunt capacitance. Great. So, that's basically what we have to do here. The measurement report, you can tick here according to measurement report. It's going to show the steps in which it's adding it. Now, obviously, uh, you can add a shunt controller that will basically uh, introduce reactive power based on the steps. So that is over here. You can have your shunt controller. If you already have a shunt controller on your system, you basically can configure it on how much, how often you want the reactive power to actually be injected onto your system, right? Based on how the system is loading. Great. Now, all we have to do here is to run the load flow analysis so we can confirm that the power factor have actually been improved from what it was to the new value. And as you can see here, the power factor is 0 
5 exactly the way we calculated it right and the apparent power is 15.7 power is 15 q is 4.7 and as we can see here everything actually checked out right q2 the compensation is 4.8 and over here is about 4.7 calculation and measurement discrepancies uh, p 14.7 and and s 15.51 mva got 15.7 and 15 so it basically checked out as you can see p and s here they basically they even much closer they just separated by about 700 uh, kilo volt ampere or 700 kilowatt if you want so that's the only difference here otherwise they should be merging now if power factor become one then they are going to merge as we've seen in the power triangle now here our shunt capacitance is supplying what uh about negative five mega volt ampere reactive and that means it's injecting reactive power in the system so from a perspective of the shunt capacitor here it is injecting because it's almost as a load as well onto the system but instead of absorbing like inductive loads are doing here they are absorbing with a positive q the shunt capacitor have a negative q which means it is injecting it in the system don't confuse it with the positive q's from the grid which are supplying into the system but the inductive loads here or capacitive load they inject and absorb power uh, reactive power into the system so that is it guys for this tutorial if you found it useful as always thank you for watching and gives it a thumbs up share it onto your social media network and also if you are working on a power system network and you'd like to receive assistance you are more than welcome to reach out my membership is open for anyone who want to receive direct assistance from SimTech channel thank you for watching until next time cheers